All right, so here I'm gonna go over the basics of what you need to know from chapter five. So chapter five, the main idea about is uh, structural balance. So structural balance is this idea that we have a network graph and the edges in that graph represent uh, positive or negative relationships. So structural balance is the sense of which the network itself is not in tension. So there's not a tension there. So let's make sure we understand here positive edge. A positive edge in one of these types of graphs indicates an attraction. Sometimes we would call that a friendship or affiliation, meaning you do sort of uh, cling together. A negative edge in one of these networks indicates repulsion. So that's the opposite of attraction. If you think about it in terms of magnetism, you can think of it as sort of the opposite of friendship, meaning there's some sort of enemy or enmity between the two nodes, or there is some sort of avoidance uh, that they, the nodes are trying to keep apart. So it's a, a weird thing to think about that you'd have a, a network where there's an edge that implies avoidance between two nodes. You know, in your mind, you're already thinking, oh, why don't we just like remove that edge? Um, the very underlying assumption in this whole chapter is there are these contextual, fact contextual factors that we talked about like in chapter four that are ensuring these edges are maintained. So you might have, you know, A, B, C, and D, you know, they sometimes disagree or whatever, but you know, this might be at the office and they have to come to work every day. They do have to communicate and work together, but these edges, you know, you know for example, B and D are just constantly arguing with each other. You know, they sort of, yeah, they're making negative things. So um, yeah, so that's the main idea of this uh, moving in through this chapter. So structural balance is the sense of the, that the graph has sort of a group of friends inside one set, a group of friends inside another set, and then that there's a mutual antagonism or mutual negative um, edges between the two sets. That is a balanced network, okay? So we think that's okay. We don't see any tension as a researcher in saying there are, you know, all these people are holding together in set X, all these people are holding together in set Y, and they're basically kind of fighting together uh, between the two sets. That is still balances. Um, one of the main ways we can do this, if we're drawing the actual edges, if we take three nodes, there needs to be an odd number of positive edges linking them. That means there needs to be, if you go through this triangle, you know, A, B, and C, there has to be either three positive edges, meaning they're all friends, or there needs to be an odd number, meaning there's one positive edge, so like maybe A and B are joined together, and then there needs to be two negative edges, so A and C negative, A and, uh, B and C negative, meaning, you know, there's mutual antagonism between the two sets. When we're unbalanced, that means there's tension in the network. Uh, I like to think about this as you have to think of the, the enemy of my enemy should be my friend. The enemy of my enemy, if they are my enemy, then there's uh, a little bit of tension here. And we'll talk about, there's cases where it actually doesn't end up being tension that way, but we'll, that's a later topic. So unbalanced network, this is tension. So I got this uh, example graph here with A, B, C, and D. And if we look at a few of these triangles, we'll see that there's, you know, there's, there's something a little off here. So if you look at the A, B, D triangle, you know, B and D are buddies, they're friends, and A is the one they don't like. So that's, that one works fine. If you look at A, B, and C, uh, you know, C and B get along, A and C get along, but A and B don't get along. There's tension there that causes tension, and we would expect something to change. Uh, we're going to change from positive to negative, um, or, you know, one of these edges is likely to be removed. 
Um, but we've already talked about how the contextual factors kind of keep them together, like you're just stuck together. And so, you know, issues happen. Um, let's see, B, C, and D, that one's also unbalanced. But here's the thing. So if you look at the A, B, C one, you might think, okay, um, maybe A and B should resolve their differences, uh, but that's gonna cause problems between A and D, and then maybe A and D will resolve their differences, and everyone will uh, resolve their differences, and everyone will be happy. Now, that's a great idea, and actually, in a network like this, where uh, external factors are holding it together, the tension of unbalance is going to tend to do that. Although I'm sure you're already in your mind thinking, oh, well, well why wouldn't it happen that, for example, if we decide, um, if we put B and C have a negative relationship, so B you know, makes enemies with C, then you can actually see there the network becomes balanced again. So there are ways, right? That's what I was saying about we might change the sign. So if you have a situation where there's a single negative, we're going to convert it to a positive like that B, C, D one. Or, and this is the next sort of topic we have, and that is we can go to just maintaining all negative uh, edges. All negative edges means, hey, all the people within this uh, network don't really like each other, but they're still just going to maintain uh, this relationship. So... Uh, that's a little bit of an extension. The idea of this negative relationship between either just nodes or in this case it's sets of nodes is you know considered weakly balanced and that means we would in a lot of cases just expect this network to continue to exist like it is. This might be within a company you might have several divisions of the company within the division the people get along so we've got you know sales we've got production we've got accounting you know they get along with each other but generally speaking there's this sort of you know you hate to say antagonism but there's not the, not a positive relationship between the uh, sets in between and ironically enough in these weekly balanced networks we ha there's a situation where if you start getting a positive relationship somewhere else that's like a coalition is building and then uh, actually the antagonism might increase even more. So uh, weakly balanced where it's just sort of this understood negative relationships, uh, we can just, um, you know, oddly enough, we, we find that that can just keep going. So weakly balanced, here's the definition. The graph is complete. You can divide it into sets. It says that inside each set, everything is positive and then there's negative to each, with each other. And this is the same deal. The enemy of my enemy might be my enemy and they might be my enemy. And what we have whenever you end up with a problem is that you have, you know, enemy, enemy, um, and then like sort of two friends. So you can't have the, I've got an enemy, the enemy, friend, friend, those triangles don't work because that's going to cause, um, that causes problems. So looking at it again, uh, the example before, and it's, these are kind of arbitrary. The example before the idea was we've drawn every possible edge within the network. And this is the idea of, you know, what if you haven't drawn the edges? And it's still the same deal. The enemy of my enemy um, is my enemy or the enemy of my enemy uh, is my friend. And so what you do with, um, if you have an incomplete graph, um, then you'll put in, or you need to go through sort of the triangles. And there's these two are equivalent. I don't even know why it's, that's, I guess that's why this is such a short, short chapter. But if you look at it, you can either draw in the assumed negative relationships. So if you look at my little diagram here, the first one A has the initial setup. If you draw in the assumed, um, relationships like if you draw in the link from one to four there four has a plus with five and a negative with one and since we expect um, an even number of negative edges then we need a you know that needs to be negative so one and four is going to be negative and what we've done in the little in the b area is drawn the negative and positive edges 
And ironically enough, those are well, not ironically enough. It's kind of annoying that they're exactly the same as just dividing the graph into two sets where, you know, one set is positively linked, one set is negatively linked. And actually, if we go back to that previous diagram where we had the different sets positively linked together and just negatives in between them, is anytime you can cluster a network like this, where we have these repelling relationships or enemy relationships, that then, um, you know, that's a weakly balanced network. So not a lot to chapter five. And um, hopefully you're looking forward to the next little lecture.